being adopted, what is it like? What does it mean? You know, I found out I was adopted from before I can even remember. It's a common question I get. When did they tell you? When did you know? And I think because my family all looked so different, it became very obvious to anyone who saw us together as a family that somebody might be related to somebody else. And so oftentimes people would say to my mom, let's say my dad wasn't around, oh, she must look like your husband, referring to my sister. Because I did look a little bit more like my mom than I did my dad, and certainly nothing like my sister. And she would say, no, the girls are adopted. And this might surprise you, but the common response was, shh, not in front of the children. Because in the era that I was adopted, adopted was, adoption was a very quiet thing. It wasn't something people talked about. It was thought to be something that should be kept quiet. It's a secret. No one should know. And that's really the truth around the story of my adoption. My birth mother, who I have come to learn because I have talked to her, I have been connected with her through the, through the cradle, she and I have talked on the phone and she's told me a bit about the story that I never knew growing up. She became pregnant at 17. Totally unexpected. She and her boyfriend thought they had the world together, they've been dating throughout high school, they planned on getting married, and lo and behold, came along a little bit before it was time. And because of that, my birth mother found that she had very little support from her parents. She was the oldest of four, and her parents had no interest in having the stigma of a child who was unmarried, dating a boy of a different religion that they, she found out very quickly they never approved of. And they gave her two choices. It was to leave the family and leave her boyfriend, or she could raise the baby on her own. But they would help her if she chose to leave the family and the boyfriend if she would go somewhere and have the baby quietly. So her parents found the cradle, helped her in Chicago. She and she received that support from the cradle until I was born, and I continued to live at the cradle until I was able to go to my family. On the other side of the equation is my adoptive family. My parents always, always wanted to have a family, and they'd hoped and hoped for children, and were not able to do so on their own. And that's really the core of adoption, is two women, both who want what's best for a child. Birth mother that's not able to parent the way that they always dreamed of, and a set of parents, or an adoptive mom and adoptive father, who are hoping to be able to have a child to love and nurture and parent the way they always hoped to. So these two women in my life have very similar drive about what they wanted for me. So I grew up feeling extremely loved and knowing that I was wanted in every which way. But coming now as an adult, I did come to realize that it would be interesting to know who my birth mother was. And the first set of information I was able to receive from the cradle was when uh, my sister and I turned 18. There's something called non-identifying information. Okay, what is that? What does that mean? The cradle offers families information about birth families to an adoptive child that gives them some information that's just general. What they look like, their hair color, their, their professions that their families might have been involved in. And I learned very quickly that I look probably a lot like my birth mom. She was five feet tall with fair skin and green eyes and blonde hair. <laughs> so there you go. So finally I had some sense that I knew where I came from and I knew where I belonged, but I didn't really know what I looked like. And for me that was the missing link. This is what did I look like? You know, what would what would siblings look like who might look like me? I didn't have that advantage growing up of having that sense of visual com commonality with my surroundings. But when I was 18, getting that information was really pretty neat, especially the way it came to me. My mom chose to give it to us on Mother's Day when I was 18 years old. So it was a pretty neat gift from my mom, and it showed me that she really cared and understood that I might have questions. I might have some blanks in my, my landscape of who I thought I was. I didn't have any other further questions until I became a little bit older and thought, you know, it might be interesting to know more about my genetics, some health background, some history, some knowledge, and maybe there's more to know and I didn't really know. My birth mother and I came together. And we have spent time, years actually, many years, about six years now, we've been talking over the phone. And the first phone call we had was so amazingly moving and settling and emotional and all sorts of things wrapped up into one. Her biggest fear as she cried on the phone with me was, do you forgive me? And I sort of, I think I surprised her as much as myself and said, why would I need to forgive you? And she said, well, you must be so mad at me. And that's when I had the opportunity to show her that I always had deep and ingrained respect for the thing I assumed to be true, which was she must have made a very hard choice 
come to learn that was true. She had always wanted to parent me and couldn't. And when I was able to tell her from my heart that I've never had anything but appreciation for your choice, she cried even harder. <laughs> and I think we both cried a lot. And, and it was a moment where she came to realize that she had and truly made the best choice for me. And she was now finally in the later part of her life secure in the knowledge that I lived a good life, she picked a good family, and I was raised with all the things that she absolutely wanted for me and that she was ultimately able to give the children that she had when she finally married and had children of her own. We talk on a regular basis. You know, I get another person who cares about my birthday, another person who cares about my wedding anniversary and my children. And so at the end of the day, there's a lot of people who want to share love with me and it makes me feel even more special than I did when I was a kid. And that's the story of my adoption.